Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolors. Thank you for joining me in another painting video. It's been a while since I painted a rainy street scenery, and lately Seattle has been rained a little bit more, so it's starting to inspire me to do one of these again. The source image on the left here is actually a screen capture from Google Street View. I just kind of go around in the Google map and I found the shot that I like and I decided to use this as a reference. And because I just treat it as a reference, I actually change a few things here and there. And the first thing I change is actually the camera itself. Because Google Street View is captured by a 360 camera on top of a vehicle, so all of the shots are taken right on the road. But if I want to change it into something that's a little bit more believable, I want to actually change it into a point of view that I'm actually on the sidewalk, so away from the street. So if I want to paint from that point of view, I need to change the position of the camera. So you can see that I am changing the camera to the left side of the street. So the cars and the figures here, they are all drawn according to the viewpoint that I set up. And the second thing, of course, is I change the dry weather to a rainy weather. So when you see the finished painting, you're going to see the umbrella and uh, the reflection on the west street and things like that. Because the original image, even though it is an overcast day, but it's a dry day, so the overall image looks a little bit boring. So by simply changing it into the wet day, it started to look a lot more exciting and a lot more interesting. Plus it is Seattle, so a rainy day, even though as cliche as it sound, it is iconic. So even though the video is sped up, you can probably still tell I spent quite a bit of time doing the drawing, trying to get the perspective accurate, but also try to keep it loose as well. So to have a good drawing is very, very important, especially if you're doing a street scenery like these, where the perspective and the structure of the building and the car is somewhat important. And this has a lot to do with your sense of fundamental. So if you don't have a solid fundamental skill, your drawing can fall apart very easily. So here comes the first wash. Now I want to keep the first wash nice and transparent. So just a little bit of sort of dirty water that I mix. As I come down to the horizon, I try to make it a little bit warmer and a little bit darker. And before it's dry, I paint some cloud in. I just want a little bit hint of clouds, so I paint them wet onto wet. So they will fade up into nothing. And as I come down to the horizon, I start to skip around, leave some random highlights that will suggest details in the distance. And I also try to paint around the highlights of the car, top of the car, the hood, and things like that. I use a brush with clean water and soften the horizon line because I want it to be foggy and sort of soft. And after that, I continue the wash and start to darken my wash again. And I paint around the reflection of the headlight. I usually use white gouache at the end, but this time I want to try this out to see how that works out. The first wash is all about light and atmosphere. So to have a clean wash is very, very important. So don't spend too much time and try to leave the highlights and things like that. As long as you keep those in mind, if you miss one or two, it's fine. You can always get it back with gouache in some other ways. So that's the first wash. From a very light, transparent sky to the road. And the road is also from light to dark as well. So here's the first wash. It should be nice and clean and beautiful. And you should already start to feel a little bit of the atmosphere already. And because it's like an overcast day, so there's not a lot of color. So to keep the wash clean and keep the value right, 
is more important in this case. So after the first wash is completely dry, I can start to work on it again. I start with the background building, the tall skyscraper in the back. So I mix a bluish gray and I keep it somewhat transparent, but it needs to have a little bit of value already. At this stage, don't get caught up with detail. It's very, very important. Even though you see in the photo, there's a lot of detail on the skyscraper. We're not painting those. Just paint the big shape and connect the wash as much as possible. Use some clean water and soften the background so they fade it into the mist. If you want to show a little bit of detail, show it through the little bit of highlight that you leave out. So the building on the right, I leave some highlights. And those highlights are sort of following the perspective. So it hints the building structure, nothing more. And I can do a little bit of wet on wet detail just to have the detail merge into the wash. So nothing is really defined. It's just a little bit of variety of value within that wash. And as it comes to the bottom, we start to darken things down a little bit. This can help the car and the figure to pop out a little bit more. This is also to give the building a little bit more weight as well as establish more depths. Some more soft detail went on to wet. Make sure your mixture is dry and thick. If it's too watery, you might get some cauliflower edges that you don't want. And before the wash is dry, I extend that wash down and I'm painting the reflection already. So I paint a little bit of car and I extend that wash down and I mix a little bit of cooler color so that reflects the skyscraper in the distance. And I just start to paint a little bit of reflection. I might darken it a little bit later, but it is important that I start to kind of think ahead and start to prepare what I'm going to paint later. And now I'm painting the building on the left. So I imagine myself standing on the left side of the street so the buildings on the left is a little bit closer to us so i'll make it a little bit darker i'm leaving out some highlights on the side of the building so it suggests the forms turning and now before it's dry i paint the tree and i have the tree connect into the building so it's one single shape even though they're a bunch of shape connect with each other i make it into one single shape and you can see from the tree, I connect to behind the figure and to the bottom of the car. And the same thing, I start to paint the reflection as well. And that car is yellow, so the reflection, I add some yellow into it. One of the challenges I try to give myself now is to think ahead a little bit more so that I can paint less layers and try to do more within each wash. So that's not a very easy thing to do because I really need to think about what I'm going to paint and really executing the plan accordingly. But the result usually pays off. The painting looks cleaner and a little bit fresher. Now the wash is dry, so I'm painting the car on the right. Now this car is the largest car because it's closest to us. So I'm painting a little bit more detail on this car. And this car will be darker as well. The car itself is black, so I um, don't need to be afraid of going really dark on this one. So I keep the highlight on the hood and I try to reinforce the shadows on the bottom. So this will show the structure and the form a little bit better. And I actually connect the bottom dark into the reflection as well. So I'm adding some water, getting that paint run down. So the paint melt into the water. 
and I also make the reflection of the building a little bit darker as well. So it sort of merge into the reflection, which is what makes it interesting because the separation between the car and the reflection is disappear. So it feels very atmospheric. And by not painting everything that's there, when the viewer is looking at the painting, their brain will finish the painting themselves. And that makes the viewing experience more interesting. Now I'm painting the reflection of the building on the windshield. And that little touch will make it feel like it is glass. So while I'm at it, I'm painting the car on the back. A little bit less detail than the car in the front. Now you can see there's a lot of depths because of the value. And now I'm starting to paint the figure. The figures on the back. We just keep them very loose and just trying to work on the shape. If the shape looks good, it will look good. So painting the figure in a landscape or a cityscape like these, we don't need to paint a lot of details, but we do want to establish good proportions. So make sure the head are kind of small and the legs are long. And while we're painting the figure, we're painting their reflection as well. Again, try to connect as much shape as you can, even with separate elements. Always think about how can I connect the shape together. Now painting the car on the left, it is a yellow car. So I am starting to paint that with yellow. And what's interesting about yellow car is that the top of the hood is still yellow. It's just a brighter yellow. So we don't leave it white, we still paint a nice bright yellow on top. And by darkening the bottom of the car, you can still see the form turning. So the dark bottom and I merge that into the reflection as well. Reinforce the reflection, adding a little bit more yellow. And I'm painting the figure in the front now. So all I do is paint the head and the shoulder and just let the rest of his body merge into the foreground shape. So the figure is part of the foreground shape instead of a separate element. So it belongs in the scene. And as you can see, the painting is now taking a good shape. You can see the depths, you can see the major shape. And now we're only just trying to make a little bit more sophisticated by adding a little bit more detail here and there. And a lot of detail and a lot of dark that I added is more to define the shape of the car and the figure a little bit more. So you can see, even though I'm painting some details and stuff, it's trying to support what I want to do already. So the silhouette of the car, the umbrella and things like that. Those are the reason why I paint more details and more dark is to reinforce and let the shape pops out. So now I'm adding a little bit more details to the building on the right. There's a parking sign that I want to paint it in. Very loosely though, so I'm not spelling the word out. And now I feel the buildings on the right, they're not dark enough. I want to add a little bit more depth, so I'm doing a glazing on top. Again, try to be careful, paint around the umbrella and things like that. And with that being a little bit darker, there's a little bit more depth. And the shape looks a little bit more unified as well. So if you kind of squint your eyes at the painting, you can see the major shape, the background buildings, the two side of the tall buildings, and connect through the background and the car, you can see the major shape. And here is the finished painting. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also go to my website to download my Fast Track Watercolor ebook. Thank you, and I'll see you guys again very soon.